All right, everybody, as you can tell from the title, we have ISOs, and I'm going to go over that. But first, I wanted to go over what it would look like because this will take a bit, and I wanted to install a live ISO for you, and then I'll talk about what we're trying to do. So you're going to download an ISO, and if you've used a Fedora installer before, this should be familiar. We are doing Fedora 38 ISOs, so Fedora 38 is not released. Um, so you're going to have to click past these warnings. Standards disclaimer applies. This is, uh, this is test stuff. So uh, please be cognizant of that if you try it. You'll see a screen like this. Something you might see different from a normal Fedora installer. It says Kickstart Insufficient. You can go ahead and click on this. Do your normal disk partitioning. Please remember that with Silver Blue and Kino White, uh, automatic partitioning uh, is the way to go here. And dual booting is not supported. And as always, I always recommend dual booting uh, from a BIOS uh, anyway, instead of trying to integrate two operating systems into a boot uh, thinger there. And then you want to make sure that all of these things are not red. And you are going to create your user account and password here. Passwords do not match, of course, because I'm recording. Set that to English. Set my time zone. And you're going to click Begin Installation. Now, this part's important, and the reason I'm recording doing this is you will see an address here that says ghcr.io slash ublueos slash whatever image you chose. Today, I'm going to be installing Kinoite, um, which is silver blue, but with KDE instead. It's important to note here that because this is alpha software, this progress meter will not progress at all. <laughs> um, it'll just sit there until it's done, and it's downloading the entire ISO in the background. So that might be confusing. And in the instructions that I will link to in this video, I... I, uh, I kind of outline all of the gotchas that you have to, uh, go through to figure that out. So if you've never heard of these before, ISO is the time now to, to dive in before you had to install a Fedora thing and type this weird rebase command that if you've never used Git before, it's really confusing. We now have installation ISOs of all of the things that we are building. So while this is going, let me get, take you on a tour here of what we have. If you go to the website or the GitHub repo, we have releases and you will see here they are. We have ISOs for Kinoite, LXQt, Mate, Sericia, which is Sway, uh, the window manager, the tiling window manager. Fedora calls that Sericia, which is 38 only. So we figured, hey, now's the time to try it. Uh, Silverblue and uh, Voxite, which is XFCE. And we have the signatures for all of those there. What these are, are you blue images which are custom fedora images so what we do is we take fedora and then we add some quality of life features extra udev rules we have flat pack uh, service units that update them for you in the background we turn auto automatic updates on and then we enable a bunch of things that are really problematic and difficult to uh, for new users to figure out how to install. So we'll install all your drives for you, all the stuff with RPM Fusion, all your codecs, all of that stuff is included on these ISOs. Additionally, we have ISOs with built-in NVIDIA drivers soon. <laughs> We're in the progress of, of doing the NVIDIA ones right now, uh, but the main ones are done. So if you don't have an NVIDIA machine, maybe you have a laptop, you can start helping us test these ISOs uh, right now, which is really great. So one of the reasons we've been doing this is to offer continuously delivered Fedora. Like, what is that? So every single day we take Fedora, we take these improvements and we build an image for you. And then you install that image on your computer. The difference between this and normal Fedora is that we are delivering this to you via what's called an OCI container, more commonly known as Docker container. And that lets us basically turn any system that has Git and Podman slash Docker into an operating system factory, which is exactly what we did. We turned GitHub into an operating system factory. We take all of the things that come in Fedora, we kind of slipstream them for you, and then that's, that's what you have. The advantages to doing 
something like this at the risk of just reading the website to you. Uh, but let me go over these in case you're new here and maybe you're trying to understand what's happening here and why uh, some of us are so excited about this, what I call the cloud native model, the next generation of the Linux desktop. So first is reliable atomic updates with built-in rollback. No PPAs, no manual stuff at all. If you are running Silverblue and you want to switch to KDE, that is a atomic operation. So it is, it's either fails or it um, succeeds. There's no weird state in the middle. Those of you like me who have Frank and Debian yourself by having different sources, because these are atomic operations, the same kind of things that happens in a database, which is why the modern world works. Um, that allows us to atomically switch between any of these desktops, which is really cool and something that hasn't been available before. And that's, that's kind of neat. And it removes a lot of the jank and configuration drift that happens when you have systems that have been lived in for a while. So you always have that fresh feeling, um, on, on, on your system. And if you have an NVIDIA machine, it also means that we build the images in GitHub for you. So, you never have to build the, uh, the drivers or any of that stuff or get an RPM fusion conflict error because it wants to remove system D that day for some reason. In fact, the reason that we're not doing Nvidia images right now is there's an error with, uh, the re repo for RPM fusion that we're using right now for Fedora 38 that is causing the builds to fail. And normally this would fail. Um, uh, it's in here somewhere. Uh, and normally this would fail on your computer. If you've been using NVIDIA stuff for a while, you know how uh, adding a third party repo, sometimes stuff doesn't match and that just sucks. And nobody, nobody wants to do that anymore. Right? So that's part of the reason this next generation is, is going to become popular. It's the same thing that runs on your steam deck and your phone has been running this way for a while. It just makes things really, really nice. We offer full flat hub integration out of the box. You just have it. Um, so out of the box, you click on the thing and you have flat hub there. Um, and we offer distro box in addition to toolbox to give you that flexibility to run your containerized workflows. So if you're coming from a traditional Linux, usually, um, so, you know, if you were to say, Hey, how do I run a thing on your computer? You say app, get install Apache, right? If you come from cloud, you usually type Docker pull Apache or Nginx or something like that. So for services, it's kind of moving to that model that, um, cloud is, has been popularizing for the past decade almost where it's uh, we're running these containers right on our systems and it lets us basically run anything that's out there which is really nice and distrobox and toolbox also give you the opportunity to run older software that might not have a flat pack or maybe it only works for a certain distro so it's a good tool to use to get you what you want and what you need my video has all sorts of or my channel has all sorts of videos on distrobox so hopefully you'll check those out and you get a level of customization that um, really hasn't been seen before, which is the other half of Ublue, which uh, Universal Blue, uh, that's kind of where the name comes from, the universal part is, sure, we're making ISOs and we're making cool operating systems, but the other part is the GitHub actions and the scaffolding that we're building in place and a lot of it isn't done and we have to go back and document all this stuff, uh, but we know we kind of know where we need to go uh, for you to make your own images, custom images, because people are going to cynically, and I would have said this as well. Oh, great. Another distro, right? Um, but I can also move back to normal Fedora without reinstalling. So it's not a normal distro. It is something else. I don't know what that is, but we're going to find out. Um, so what I've been telling people, this is more akin to a custom Ansible script or something like that, where we have that clean separation between what the OS is and then the customizations on top. And that's why everything is in Git and open for you to inspect and to check to make sure that that is. And of course you can build all of these images and stuff on your own hardware. I've got instructions for doing that. It's, it's not as hard as you think. So this is really, really interesting because you can now choose different user experiences without ever having to do a reinstall. Um, and that's something that's never been seen before. And that's, that's the reason I'm doing it, you know? So it's, it's going to be really nice. You get some other features as well. 
you always can roll back. So if your computer was working perfectly on that Friday and it's Tuesday and you got, you pulled something down and it's not working right, you can always rebase to that day. In fact, GitHub holds 90 days worth of image backups for us. So you can go back as far as you want, or if you're going on a trip and you don't want updates and you're risk averse, you can always stay on that image until you get back from your trip. There's a lot of flexibility there uh, that, is really handy. And because we are hosted on GitHub, it's, uh, it's all CDN. So you don't have to worry about mirrors or any of that stuff for your hosts, for your toolboxes. You're still going to want to make sure that you're using the right mirrors and things like that. So I am really excited about this. As you can tell, uh, this has been a journey for me. I counted today. Let's reboot, um, 628 days is how long I've been working on this. Uh, which is interesting. Most of that was wandering around in the desert lost, but then one person showed up and then we had two people and then we had three people. And eventually we had enough people come in and help us out and build the thing that you see today. This is alpha. Uh, it is planning on, I'm planning on keeping the ISOs as alpha, uh, all, all the way up until Fedora 38 comes out. Uh, and then that entire cycle, we'll probably call it beta the entire time as well. This feature of running your operating system as a Docker, as a Docker container, OCI container, um, is a feature in Fedora that is so new that they're not even enabling it until Fedora 39. Um, if you can imagine as fast as Fedora is when it comes to the leading edge of stuff, we're going one cycle ahead. So it would, it would be irresponsible for us to say, Hey, you know, these are final and perfect and things like that. So. That's why I'm making this video and this call for help, because I need your help to get these ISOs. Let us know how you're getting on. And this really is a great way to run your computer in that zero maintenance, that, that Chrome book level of not having to care, but you want that power that KDE gives you or GNOME gives you or Sway, whatever, whatever thing you're into, we can finally get there. Linux friendly hardware, and now the software that we need to get us to that level of reliability that we've been missing this entire time. And that's why I'm excited about that. So as you can see here, I've got KDE and I am good to go. Our most popular image right now, even though it doesn't have an ISO is a Kinoite NVIDIA image. Uh, so this is also kind of a call, call for a little competition here because I feel the KDE people especially since the Steam Deck is out and they have that model already, right? They have, they have uh, the Steam Deck and you can plug it in and you're getting that, that nice experience with the flat hub to get you the tools that you need, right? And if you have an NVIDIA card, Steam OS as a general desktop operating system is not out yet. So Kinoite-NVIDIA, once we get those ISOs up, I'm reasonably confident it's gonna be the closest thing that you're gonna get to Steam OS. Um, and these NVIDIA... Um, images are going to be the best that you can get from the testing that we've done so far uh, until MVK is ready. And when MVK is ready, you're going to rebase to an image. You're not going to have to reinstall them either. So as you can tell, I'm really excited about this. A lot of other people have really been helping out. This has been a passion project for me for this entire time. Thank you so much for following the channel. Help me out. Tell a friend. Try it. And I think you're going to like it. So thanks. And have a great day.